Whoa, a pop pop boat. Turbina, that's a nice name for it, isn't it? Well, back it says Laxfield. Why does it say Laxfield? Well, that's because the artisan who made this lived in Laxfield, a little village over in the east of England, East Anglia. What a beautiful job. Pin. This is made by Ron Fuller. Who I've sadly lost. He's just died very recently, in his 80s. And I knew him for the last 35 years. Very, very talented. Born in Cornwall. But most, most of his life in East Anglia, where he raised three boys and four foster daughters. With he and his wife, Moss. A wonderful party they gave. She gave... A few days ago, there was about a hundred people attending. I dug through my collection and found some of the toys that I've had from him over the years and ones which I've inspired him to make. So here's a little resume by way of a tribute to Ron. This is the first one I bought after the Pop Pop boat. Sausage machine. Isn't that wonderful? Pratt Sausages, they call it. Well, the name Pratt must be somewhere out there because I came, remember doing a show for one of his neighbours, David Pratt, David Louise Pratt. But look at the amount of detail that's gone into it. Tin toys at its best and quite robust. I've actually shown this to an awful lot of children over the last 30 years and I'm very pleased to have it still in my collection. Made by Ron. He also liked doing top, top, topical things. So when we had the royal wedding in the early 80s, for instance, Charles and Diana, this was one of the Lazy Tongs action things. So this is what he made. The right royal kiss. Beautiful. <laughs> so he was topical. And then he showed what he could sell in these extraordinary sheets. He produced lots and lots of these sheets, showing a full catalogue of all these products. Tiny little scribble of lighting, very, very detailed. And the pop-pop boat, which you're hearing in the background, is somewhere down here, I think it is. But there were several sheets like this, because he made so many toys to sell. There was a time, I think, in the early 90s, when they wanted to celebrate the, the circus in the, in the English scene, or the British scene, Roll Up Circus. It was um, something it said designed by Ron Fuller. What, what he did was to design the stamps. I'll leave the this back to show you them. So he designed all those little circus automatons which appeared in his wonderful circus automatons, the very big ones, which are sort of machine ones, um, over the years. And so they got him to actually do the artwork for the celebration of the circus and the British life. There was also as well as the ones he's designed and made, a number of toys which I introduced him to, and he liked them so much, he decided to make his own copies of them. This is one I wanted to get some spares of. It's a, just a, a clothes peg. I showed it to him ooh, about 30 years ago. I bought it in Amsterdam. He absolutely loved it. The mechanism is exactly up his street, and what it does is just pretend to stir the coffee. I don't think it would actually work very well, especially with all that metal around, but there we are. Might give a metal taste. But he made, um, I think, about four dozen of these, and I bought a dozen off him at a very reasonable price. I was able to give them to friends. So. Not his design, but he took to it like a duck to water and made a number of them. And then another one he made, which was very high-tech stuff, this. That's the interesting thing about Ron, is, as well as being a good mechanic, he was also a very good um, electronics man. He could make electronical stuff. So this is the Skywriter, which is um, designed by Bill Bell. I've had this in my collection well, since the early 80s, I think it was. I originally had it. In. And the idea is you put a... Uh, a, 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 a battery to it, set it up, and then either waggle through the air or waggle your head. Well, I'll waggle it through the air and see what happens. He said, what do you want as a message, Tim, in it? So I said, well, well, one of my magician friends who you know um, asked me to put in seven of hearts <laughs> so he could do a card trick and then say at the denouement, and your chosen card is, waggle, 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 seven of hearts appears. So this was made by Ron for me sometime in the mid-80s with him embracing a technology which I think Bill Bell had designed in the 1970s. Um, just like that, he, he was able to, to produce it and program it. And I really admired Ron for his ability to not look at, not only at the, at the past with toys, but also at the future. Another one which um, I introduced him to was this extraordinary thing called muscle wire, which is, this is something he really liked because he immediately saw the possibility of making a lot of his little automatons work much better with something that didn't rely on solar noise. The, the real mechanism here is a very, very fine piece of wire, almost invisible here, which is made of nice and metal. When it's heated and then cooled, as it heats, it shortens and creates a bit of movement. And when it cools, it lengthens again. So this is a little thing called wings, which I bought 
from a company in America, and he took to it immediately when he saw it and said, I've got to, I've got to have this in, in my collection. And the effect is it, it gently flaps its wings, but very, very, very slowly, due to the muscle wire taking a long time to cool. So an extraordinary toy, which he, he, I think he, over the next two years, he got me to buy a load of this muscle wire for his automatons. And I can understand why, because this is exactly what he wanted to do, create movement, but without the need for magnets. So that was a wonderful way of introducing him to the high technology. Uh, another one which he introduced me to, which I'd never seen before, was this one here, which is uh, electroluminescent uh, electro string. It's extraordinary stuff. This, this is designed in Germany by physicists way back in the ooh, what, 50, 60 years ago. When you switch it on, it glows blue. And when you switch it off, it becomes transpa transparent again. So blue and transparent. When it's blue, you can do so many things with string like this. You can, for instance, I saw in a, in a magic convention, some people had it on, the, on their suits. They'd sewn it into the suits like this to give them a glowing to all their lapels. It's wonderful stuff, electroluminescent wire. And Ron discovered this and then passed the information on to me. So to me, it was a wonderful thrill to be able to find something which I've never come across before. You have it in different colors and it's now getting quite commonplace, but Ron was the first one to introduce it to me. So this wonderful man, made automatons. This is another example of one of the ones he invented himself. It's, a, it's a based on the old Russian pecking hen, but here we are in the Folie Bergeres, and we've got dancing can-can girls. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Superbly crafted by Ron. It makes people laugh. Well, this is his legacy. We've, we've lost Ron now, but um, his legacy is to make a lot of children laugh and their parents and adults smile at the things he's made. Many of them are still in the public domain, many of his automatons are, and some other than private collections. So I think to myself, what a wonderful toy maker, what a wonderful man. Huh.